Hello, welcome to the Friday, August 4th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. If you're interested in a little side project to help us out here at the Internet Storm Center, I posted about our Raspberry Pi honeypot. So if you have a spare Raspberry Pi sitting in a corner, you may install our software in order to contribute to our data collection effort. Really important in particular to get, uh, for example, home users online. It's not really a matter of how important your network is. Actually, what we're looking for is sort of average networks and by using the Raspberry Pi platform I think we made it reasonably easy to set this up for yourself so take a look at the diary it has more instructions and links to the github repository with the code and Troy Hunt added an additional service to his website, Have I Been Pwned? Now, this website has been collecting breach data for quite a while now, and you were able to enter your email address and were able to figure out whether or not your email address has been shown up in any breaches. Now, I've lately commented on this that this isn't really all that useful because pretty much all email addresses have shown up in breaches at some point. So if your email address is displayed, you don't really know what password went with this particular breach in particular, since the site typically doesn't show you what breach your email address was involved in. Well, uh, Troy Hunt now offered a new service for Have I Been Pwned? And that's a collection of passwords. It's somewhere in the, around 300 million passwords that Troy has accumulated via various online resources. Now you don't get the email address going with the password of course, but you can just download all these 300 million passwords or there are APIs and various other queries that you can use to check if a certain password is inside that list. I think this service is useful for a number of reasons. Now, Troy specifically says that you probably shouldn't really enter your real password into a site like this, but uh, then again, you can also just enter a SHA hash. That's another option that's available. And uh, you can use that kind of to demonstrate to people that their password has probably been leaked. And of course, for penetration testers, that's a real great resource. If you ever have to brute force a password, then having this list available uh, would make brute forcing rather effective, probably even better than some of uh, the rainbow tails because rainbow tables usually cut off at a certain password length while this uses actual passwords of arbitrary length. And the NPM blog reports that there has been yet another attack against NPM, which is the packet managing system behind Node.js. Just like with any popular language, there is a rich repository of NPM packages that developers can use in order to help them augment their code. And on the same note, developers, of course, are able to upload packages they wrote via NPM. The problem is that there isn't really any validation and what happened recently was that uh, malicious developers uploaded lookalike packages that looked very much like very popular packages that are commonly in, used in projects. So they essentially used the same name with an added dash or anything like that. And then other developers, of course, uh, fell for this, included these lookalike packages instead of the authentic one. Now, at first it looked like these lookalike packages did essentially the same thing. They were functional, but they also exfiltrated data to a website. So whenever a developer would use any of these malicious packages and include them in their project, a user would then run the software, including that malicious package. And now data from the user system would be leaked to the author of the malicious package. 
So far, 40 packages were found and removed. There may be others out there. Now, there's some discussion now how to prevent this in the future by flagging any new package that looks very much like an existing package. Apparently, they're already doing some spam filtering there for package names. We'll see what will work. This is, of course, a fundamental problem with all similar library repositories. And yes, this certainly has been done against other repositories, not just against NPM. Well, that's it for today. We may have some additional STI students next week. Didn't get to record anybody this week. And uh, by the way, as a reminder, I'll be teaching in Berlin, Germany last week of October. So if you're living in Europe, if you're interested in learning more about intrusion detection and IPv4, IPv6 and related protocols, uh, take a look. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.